This old man owned a beautiful, graph-filled property in the heart of town. He loved it, but not everyone liked his claim on the land. Housing developers tried to buy his house for years, but the old man always refused them. They didn't understand why, but everything became clear when they entered his house. But before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. This seemingly large slither of green land might seem significant to most, but it used to be much bigger. Larry, the owner of the lot, also used to own the entire surrounding area. It was a beautiful forest-filled property where animals bred and rivers flowed throughout. But then, something terrible happened. Larry bought the large piece of wild country back in the 60s. He and his family cultivated some of it and managed to build a large but warm family home there. But there was one problem. Once Larry got older, taking care of his vast land became much harder. Of course, he wanted nature to thrive on its own mainly, but maintaining a well-balanced forest still took a lot of manual work. That's why he eventually was forced to sell large pieces of land to someone. The buyer seemed like a genuine guy. He told Larry that he was a profound nature lover and would make it his life's mission to preserve his beautiful wild land as much as possible. Larry thought that he found a friend who shared his beliefs, but unfortunately all of it was a lie. Because almost instantly, after signing over the deeds to this supposed friend, things started changing. Larry saw threes disappearing on the edges of his forest and more and more people in suits driving across the land. And when Larry asked about it, he discovered that the buyer sold all the property to housing developers for profit. The old man was heartbroken. He had made this place what it was, the area that his family called home, and he was powerless to stop it because he himself signed the legal documents that made it possible. After that moment of realization, he made a promise to himself, a commitment to never sell this last piece of land that he owned, not to friends, not to anyone. Over the years that followed, the surrounding area did just what he was afraid of. It changed dramatically. Bit by bit, he saw every piece of forest change into an urban area. An entire town was created on the once peaceful forest floor. Populations of birds disappeared and baggers relocated. At this point, Larry had reached the old age of 80 and he was starting to feel in his bones. And the fact that he was getting older was a nudge in the door for the housing developers. They contacted Larry multiple times trying to persuade him with offers to buy the land. And to be fair, they were reasonable offers, but as you might expect, Larry refused every last one of them. They needed another, more gentle approach, and without expecting it this time, it worked. They decided not to approach the house in a large group like before. This time, just a small group of developers in regular street clothes stepped up to the man's house. They rang the doorbell and were surprised that Larry opened up this time. He looked at them and sighted calmly. Larry asked for the men's intent, even though he already knew why they came by. But the way they said it this time made him less defensive. They told Larry that they just wanted to talk in person. Larry grunted two times and then invited them inside. Larry walked at a surprisingly fast pace and guided them through the house. He wanted to talk in his study, but that room was in the back of the house. The men peeked into every room they passed on the way over to the study. And with each room they viewed, their eyes widened more. This house was unlike anything they had ever seen. They got more intrigued by the minute, not by the room's beauty, but by how odd they were. Each one of the rooms had a different look that was distinctive and weird in its own way. But there was one thing all rooms in the house had in common. They were all absent from human life. Where was his family? The rooms indicated that more people lived here, but they only saw Larry. Eventually, they entered the study with him and didn't hesitate to ask their one burning question. The old man looked at the ground, clearly searching for the right words, and then said there was no family. It was just him, and there had not been any family in this house for many years now. But what about all those decorated rooms then? The housing team replied. Larry stepped outside of his study and walked into the newspaper room. From there, he grabbed a dusty and discolored newspaper and showed it to the men in his house. It was an article from decades ago that showed how his family all passed away in a bizarre car accident. I was the only survivor. Larry continued by saying that the rooms belonged to his loving family. 
His wife loved gardening so much that he built her an indoor greenhouse. His young daughter loved the color pink and stuffed bunnies, and his son, who was a science nut. But his room is upstairs, so you have not seen it yet. In all those years, I never changed anything about their rooms. Not one toy or book was moved. The developers had to admit it was a remarkable sight, but it was also clear to them that this man was severely traumatized and clung to every detail from when his family was still alive. Larry let himself fall backward, landing in a creaky old rocking chair. And there he sat sobbing, looking at old pictures of happier times. He remained silent while the developers talked amongst each other. We cannot take this house from him. That would kill him, one of the men said, whispering. They mumbled while Larry kept staring downward. But then a loud voice arose from the group of men. I've got it, I, one of the developers shouted. I think I have come up with a plan that would satisfy both parties, he said. His fellow employees looked at him, confused, but then he started explaining. He said it was a plan they had in storage for a while, but it was never fully realized. But learning about your past, it just might work. He first of all promised never to build another house on Larry's property again, but he did ask permission to make something else on his land. Larry looked up from his book and gazed, confused at the man explaining. The developer continued speaking and said the original idea was not to build housing on Larry's large final piece of land. Its central placement in the town made it a perfect spot for a large community park, a place filled with greenery that would connect all surrounding neighborhoods in harmony because that is what fits with this area. The idea brought a broad smile to Larry's face. The atmosphere in Larry's house changed dramatically after that. They agreed and shook hands. Within a year, the town's park was realized, and that fact came with an extra welcome surprise for the now satisfied Larry. At first, the old man was a bit hesitant. The park was stunning and definitely resembled the beauty his forest property had before, but still he wondered if he had not given up too much. Eventually, he stepped out of his house and walked into the finished park for the first time. But then, after walking around for ten minutes, he started to relax. The birds and the trees and the squirrels between the dense bushes made him feel at home. Some children played in the back, but their laughter only added to the serenity. But then he felt something bumping against the back of his leg. Larry looked toward the ground and saw that a ball lay beside him. It must be from one of the kids around here but he did not expect the boy's mom to approach him. The mother smiled as she stepped up to Larry. She introduced herself and said she saw him coming out of the central house. The housing developers made sure that everyone in town knew that Larry was the one who donated his property for the park. And when she saw Larry, she wanted to thank him. The mother said that the park brought her son much happiness. The urban area around the park had little place for him to play outside. For that, I would like to offer you something in return. She said that she was a caretaker for the local retirement home. Don't worry, I'm not here to chase you out of your house and into an old folks home, the woman said, laughing. Instead, she offered to help Larry around the house in her free time and also help out with his health. Things were getting tough to manage at his age and his aching back was bothering him more and more lately. The gesture was so kind and unselfish. It made him realize how much resentment he held onto for all those years and how one act of kindness could brighten your day just like that. He accepted, and the woman already stood at his doorstep the next day. She helped around the house, and it really made a difference. Over time, Larry's friendship with the woman and her family grew, and he even found it in his heart to finally start cleaning out the old rooms in his house. It was hard at first, Larry held on to the never-changing rooms for so long that it was difficult to change things. But by doing so, he felt a weight being lifted from his heart. He was looking toward the future, and by doing so, he was dealing with the trauma from his past.